What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 3 of our Doodle Jump series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 and 2, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 and 2, in which case you should have a little bit of your dual jump game set up and in this video we'll be improving this and making it a lot better with our player movement controls. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So now I'm going to head over to the doodle jump guy and I'm going to start off with when green flag is clicked and I'll zoom in so that you guys can see better. When the green flag is clicked, I will be hiding just like the platforms and we will be showing ourselves only after we receive the initialize message when the player clicks on play in the thumbnail. Okay, so when green flag is clicked hide and I want to create a new variable called y well, which is going to be used for the sprite only and probably you guessed it, this controls the velocity in the y direction. So now I can click uh, OK and we'll hide that variable. So I'm going to start off the code with when I receive initialize and uh, here I'm going to make a new block and this block is going to be called initialize. So this is going to be responsible for doing all the setting up of our, uh, the setting up of our dual jump guy. And uh, when, uh, when we receive initialize, I will first be uh, basically, you know, uh, calling in this block. So what we exactly have to do in this initialize? Well, I'm going to start this off by showing that score variable, which we hit in the play button. So I'm going to say, oops, um, show variable score. And after this, we will set the Y velocity right at the beginning to be zero. Now, in addition to that, I'm going to add in a go to front layer. And I will also be showing the sprite at the end. And here we need to make sure that we go to some particular coordinate. And I'm going to make sure that the sprite goes to the exact coordinate of the platform right at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is say go to and uh, where's that? Yep, go to x. Um, I'll do that here. Go to x zero and y negative hundred. And this is going to be at this position. And when you uh, press the green flag and the and the uh, I mean the play button, you can see that we are pretty much right on top of that block. Now this alone is not going to be enough. Obviously we need some movement controls. So after this initialize function, I'm going to have a forever loop. And within this forever loop, the first function I'm going to make is going to be called um, key movement. And this is going to check for our key pressed and it's going to move based on that. Uh, do not click run without screen refresh. You can just click okay without doing anything. So I'm going to call in the key movement function here. And uh, within this things are very simple. So you have an if then. So if key, um, you can have the watch key keys as well. And I think I'll do that. So if key and um, uh, head over to sensing and say if key uh, either, um, either I'm going to go ahead with the right key first. So we need the D key. So either key D is pressed or key right arrow is pressed. Then we will be first changing X by five. And then we will also switch our costume so that we have a nice little animation. So I'm going to say switch costume to doodle jump right and um, if the key left arrow is pressed, oops, if key left arrow is pressed or key A is pressed, then we will be switching the costume to doodle jump left. So this will pretty much ensure we have key movement and just to show you what I mean, you can see that we are moving for some reason in the, um, I believe in the, uh, towards the right and I think that's because I probably changed this to be uh, 5 instead of negative 5. So when you just go ahead with this, uh, it's for some reason detecting key A or D is pressed, but anyway, we will be fixing that soon. Okay, I wasn't entirely sure what happened there because now when I'm testing this out to see uh, if that bug actually happened, uh, you can see that we don't move at all. And in fact, our controls work perfectly fine. So I'm gonna leave it right here and get on into the next blocks. All right, so after this, I'm gonna have another function called switch side. And um, what the switch side function is going to be doing is whenever the doodle jump guy moves out of the screen on the left, uh, it's going to make sure he appears on the right once again. And if he moves out on the right, it's going to make sure that he appears on the left. So that's the general idea and it's pretty easy to code that. So I'm going to say if, and uh, the X position block actually helps a lot with it. You can use an if else actually, I'm, I think I'll go ahead with an if else. Uh, I'm going to say if, L, uh, if 
um, the x position is less than uh, negative 230 all right so uh, you can grab that x position block from the motion tab so if x position is less than negative 230 then we will set x to um, positive 229 and if this is not the case uh, and our x position is uh, you can actually grab an if instead of an if else so if our x position is greater than um, 230 then we will be setting our x position back to negative 229 so that's going to be it so once you have this in place you can see that uh, well we can move out of this um, okay i didn't call in that switch uh, switch side function yet that's the reason so if you call in the switch uh, side function here and then you test your game out you can see that we can move out and then we come back right on the other side and that is already a very very great improvement so now i'm going to create another function and you can think of this as like the main function and this is going to be called slide and uh, this function is going to be the one which is responsible for moving our block up and i'm going to move this function um, here and keep the slide function uh, quite um, give it quite some space between this um, uh, initialize message because we will have some code to put in here so when uh, when we define slide we have to think about what we really want to do when we're touching a platform and what i'm going to say is if we are touching the platform if touching platform then what we will basically need to do is uh, change our y velocity change our y velocity by five and doing this alone is not going to be enough because if we just have it like this and we change y by the y velocity then we'll constantly keep moving up. So what we need to do is change y velocity every single time by some kind of friction, if you want to think about it that way. And uh, I'm gonna go with minus 0.2. This may seem small, but it works out pretty fine. Uh, after this, if we just leave it like this, there's, no, uh, there's gonna be no output. Uh, so we also need to change y by the y velocity. So once you have that in place, and now you click the green flag, um, you should be able to see when you put in your slide block inside this, that well you move up like i said that you know just scrolled up really really fast uh, but we will be fixing that very very soon all right so i just went through my code and the error turned out to be this where we were changing the y well by uh, y velocity by five instead of just setting the y velocity to five and if you do this instead of changing by uh, the y velocity by five you can see that well we have a very very nice gentle slope and we can actually move our doodle jump guy alone now we don't have scrolling yet so this uh, screen is our limitation and we can't go beyond that but we will be coding that right now and uh, you also get to see that if we basically move out of the edge and we fall down nothing really happens and uh, although we aren't going to be having the output in this video i will be broadcasting a message um, so to make sure that everything hides and we switch over to the you lose um, uh, end screen all right so now what i'm going to do is make a new function and this function is going to be called check if lost and it's going to do pretty much exactly what it says it's going to constantly check every time we go through this uh, every time we go through this loop whether we've lost or we've not lost yet so within this check if lost i'm going to have a simple condition checker so if negative 169 is greater than the y position so if negative 169 is greater than the y position it means that uh, the doodle jump guy is basically hit the ground and uh, in this case what we can do is to broadcast a new message and this message is going to be called uh, player loses and um, yep that is pretty much going to be it and we will also uh, be hiding the score variable so that we don't show it in the end screen so add in a hide variable score there and that is pretty much going to be it lastly i'm going to make another block which is going to be called scroll down or just scrolling uh, i'm going to call it just scrolling and uh, this block i'm not going to call it right here because this is going to be a little bit different uh, but we will be basically um, scrolling down when our y position goes above i believe 50. so if y position is greater than 50 and uh, you can put the y position block from the motion category then we will be doing our scrolling I won't be getting too much into the scrolling right now and I will be ending this video right here and in the next video we'll be finishing up all of our code including the end screen as well as the scrolling. If you've enjoyed this video please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.